sarcopenia is a lethal issue. Um, and it's not that simple, unfortunately. Uh, in terms of lethality, um, Medicare uh, double and triple weights uh, the, the risk scores for people uh, that have sarcopenia. Wait a minute, what is it? Sarco means muscle, penia means loss of. Uh, why is it not so simple? Well, <clears throat> you would think that it would just be a little old man or a little old lady. And again, the major risk does start uh, appearing after age 65, and it increases as you get older. Um, and it is very lethal, both in terms of cardiovascular disease and other uh, problems as well. So what's complicated about it? Well, <clears throat> this uh, assumption about little old man and little old lady. Um, people assume that, well, if I maintain my weight, I'm okay. Not so. Um, you can have obesity in addition to loss of muscle mass and muscle strength. Those folks have even more risk, as we'll uh, see in this uh, video today. This video is covering um, the national recommendation or nutritional recommendations for the management of sarcopenia. Um, it's the Society for Sar Sarcopenia, Cachexia, and uh, Wasting Disease. Now, where did I see this? The Journal of the American Medical Director Association in uh, 2010. I've, you know, I've been a career medical director and maybe I've seen this journal, maybe I've heard of it, but uh, I forgot about it. Bottom line is, I don't think it's, um, well, as we know, it's not uh, New England Journal or one of the, uh, uh, one of the other earth-shaking journals, but it does have some very interesting information in here, and I think it's worth uh, taking a few minutes to see what they have to say. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, let's look at uh, who's involved with this. It's a uh, who's, who's who of uh, geriatrics. Uh, geriatric Medicine in St. Louis, the VA Medical Center, GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, I know that that's going to make a lot of people get hives when you hear that uh, there is a pharma rep in there. Barcelona, uh, Biochemistry and Molecular Bar uh, Biology. Feinberg in Chicago, uh, Northwestern, Boston uh, Medical uh, Center, Applied Cachexia Research in uh, the Department of Cardiology at Virchow uh, Kinnikum. Uh, again, an international group. This is from Berlin. And multi, uh, multi um, disciplinary group, Stroke Research in Berlin, Edinburgh, Berkeley, California. UCLA, McGill at Montreal, in Montreal, Endocrinology, uh, Rocklaw, Poland, uh, Evansville, Indiana. I didn't know they had a large academic center, but they've got a school of nutrition, um, evidently. <coughs> um, Maastricht in uh, the Netherlands. So again, an international who's who with a couple of surprises in there. Um, but what do they have to say about it? Well. <coughs> This is a group looking for uh, recommendations. What they did was they got these, uh, the quote experts together and said, let's talk about at least nutrition in terms of sarcopenia, prevention and management of sarcopenia. So the, uh, one of the key things, and we've talked about this, uh, we actually got off into what some people might consider a tangent, uh, a little bit of testosterone laden. It had to do with um, exercise. In other words, the question about intensity versus uh, reps, repetition. Um, <clears throat> and they say, yes, exercise, both resistance and aerobic exercise uh, is helpful in uh, combination with uh, protein and energy intake in the management and prevention of uh, sarcopenia. Adequate protein supplementation alone only slows loss of muscle mass um, and vitamin D levels should be checked. Now this gets into the uh, some of that confusing business about uh, and I, if you remember on the or have seen the other video about reps versus intensity, Richard the Ant Hawthorne 
a very small guy, but he's earned the reputation of, or the moniker Ant because he owns several world records in uh, terms of the, the amount of weight he can lift for his own weight. He's like, what, 5'2", 5'3", 5'4", 132 pounds, but uh, deadlifting 600 pounds, more than that, four times. Now he's not, he's thin, Sm relatively small muscle mass, but nobody would say that he's uh, frail. Now he's young, so he's, we're, we're not worried about that for him. We're worried about this mostly for people over 65, but he makes the point that it may not just be muscle mass. And so here we go. Conventionally, sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass that occurs with aging. Lean muscle mass is lauded, lost at the rate of approximately 1% per year after age age 30. Although it was originally assumed that lean muscle mass was directly proportional to muscle strength, it's now recognized that this is not always the case. This has led to the suggestion of dinopenia. Dino meaning power and penia again meaning loss. So used to dinopenia looking at uh, significant loss of muscle power. So at, def at present, the definition of sarcopenia is, is evolving where we're starting to look at that. Um, and that's especially important for not only because of the concept of uh, the little old lady or the little old man, it, it's very important in terms of having that extra weight can also be a major uh, risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So it appears that the healthiest component is more like Richard the ant, where uh, you've got a lot of power in your muscles, but you don't have a lot of mass. Again, what they're saying is there's going to be a continued development of these, uh, these definitions. Now, <clears throat> loss of muscle mass uh, has been divided into both the physiological and path pathological. Pathological meaning disease, physiological meaning not so much diseased. Uh, pathological is, is a statistical definition. Uh, two standard deviations or less. Uh, I mean, two de standard deviations or more less than the standard or the average or what the mean statistical term. Uh, it's associated with a, an extremely high rate of disability, as I mentioned before. Uh, Medicare Advantage, double and triple weights, uh, sarcopenia. Uh, healthcare expenditures, $18.5 billion per year. It's not necessarily associated with weight loss. Again, that's the, uh, the ant concept. Uh, obese sarcopenic persons appear to have even worse outcomes. So we didn't really talk about that yet, and they're, that's what they're bringing up. Um, we showed that in some of the uh, MRI scans that <clears throat> you can have someone with a, the same thigh size, but if they lose significant muscle mass within that thigh and replace it with fat, the point here is that's an even greater risk than loss of um, overall uh, body mass. So th this is the second cachexia consensus conference. Um, cachexia, that may be a new word in terms of this. Cachexia is overall uh, loss of body weight, uh, body mass, uh, not just uh, susle, uh, muscle, excuse me. Purpose of this conference was to develop consensus on nutritional recommendations. And uh, so that's the rest of this uh, article, this discussion will get more into nutrition and prevention of uh, frailty and muscle loss. Again, a lot of what we talked about earlier has to do with uh, function, performance, muscle um, uh, dynamometry. Again, when we're talking about um, our muscle strength, when we're talking about reps versus um, intensity. Now we're talking about just the nutrition itself for the rest of this article. Uh, li the literature was reviewed by two scientists. This goes into how they developed their consensus guidelines. They had two scientists within this group of who's who <coughs> review each component of the literature and present it to the group together with draft recommendations. The reviewers then gave precedence to meta-analyses, and we've talked about those several times. Cochrane is the 
group that helps develop the standards for meta-analyses. Looking Meta-analyses meaning looking at all the analyses available in the literature on a subject and trying to uh, see where they are applicable and can be used together to increase the strength. Meta-analyses were used over single studies, open discussion, and modified Delf Delphi technique. Won't get into that, but it's just a way of um, formal components for managing a group like that to develop a consensus. Uh, systematic literature uh, research was a search was done on PubMed, PubMed using the term sarcopenia with various other terms like nutrition, amino acids, cre uh, creatine, um, not creatinine, uh, creatine. Creatinine is a is a body, uh, a serum measurement uh, has to do with kidney function. Creatine is something you find in uh, muscle building supplements, vitamin D and so forth with limits to only human studies. Um, it was done on January 16th, 2010, and that's shown in uh, table one. Just a couple of other comments and we'll finish up in just uh, shortly. Aging associ is associated with Physiological anorexia. Um, I don't know if we've covered that term. It's a it's a commonly used term. Most, most people understand it's loss of uh, body mass as well. Cachexia usually meaning something very similar but in a uh, more severe level. Decreased cal caloric intake, weight loss uh, associated with decline in muscle mass and increased mortality. Um, Number of studies, two meta-analyses with older persons with nutrition shown positive effects of uh, nutritional supplementation. These persons did have uh, some degree of cachexia and thus no conclusion of the effect of supplements uh, can be drawn. So again, as you start to see, you continue to go deeper into the science and it's sort of like some of the studies regarding um, osteopenia. You see some relatively weak signals but it's nothing to write home about. Now, older persons have a high risk of in inadequate protein intake. Uh, this is the first uh, nutrient that they talk about is uh, protein. Uh, they talk about several studies. Kerstetter, for example, uh, found 32 to 41% of women and 22 to 38% of men older than 50 ingested less than the dietary recommended dietary allowance for protein. Virtually no older persons ingest the highest acceptable macronutrient dis distribution for protein of 35%. Now that's interesting because it's you know it's a it's a um, a common belief that people don't get enough protein, and most folks in the know don't really believe that. And most folks in the know would say we really focus too much on protein, and uh, we get too much. Why are you seeing the opposite statements here? Again, I think it has to do with um, aging. So, yes, that's uh, younger people do tend to focus on protein, maybe get too much. Uh, once you start getting uh, older, uh, probably not so much the same pattern where we focus too much on protein and get too much. In fact, uh, a lot of people don't get enough. Because of metabolic changes, older persons may produce less muscle protein than younger persons from the same dietary amounts. So larger amounts of protein uh, produce equal responses equal to those in younger persons. So again, building a case to say at least uh, the sarcopenia cachexia uh, society would say maybe uh, increase um, Dietary proteins, for, especially for older people. Essential amino acids, amino acids uh, t appear to be the primary stimulus uh, for protein synthesis, with leucine appearing to be the most potent of these. Produces its anabolic effects. And this is an interesting point because, again, how many times have we mentioned mTOR, the mamma mammalian target of rapamycin, as a uh, bioindicator? Uh, mTOR is considered the nutrient sensor for leucine, and essential amino acids act synergistically with exercise to increase fractional protein synthesis. So, again, with older uh, individuals, uh, what they're recommending is uh, getting 
maybe a little bit more protein than uh, up to a third of them get and focusing on uh, leucine uh, and other essential amino acids along with exercise. Creatine. Again, you've uh, people that have looked at uh, muscle uh, building supplements have mostly looked at creatine. Now, <clears throat> here's what this group has to say about it. Studies in older people have provided some evidence of positive effects of uh, creatine. Uh, Cruciatal uh, and Associates studied 30 men seven, uh, older than 70, double-blind placebo-controlled trial. They received either creatine plus resistance exercise or placebo with resistance exercise. Creatine supplementation increased lean muscle mass as well as increased leg strength, power, and endurance. Another study, men and women uh, 65 to 86, creatine su supplementation for 14 days increased maximal isometric grip strength and physical working capacity. Creatine alone or with conjugated linolenic acid increased uh, lean body mass and improved strength. Low-dose creatine together with a protein supplement increased lean mass and upper limb strength. Again, that uh, uh, tends to be somewhat opposite of what you tend to see with uh, younger people where most of this creatine discussion happens with uh, younger bodybuilder strength types that, you know what, maybe this whole focus on creatine is overdone. Yeah, maybe that's true again for, uh, for younger people but again, we're talking about a very, very different group, 65 and older. Uh, maybe, at least according to this group, and this group has credential. Um, different, a different picture. Maybe protein needs to be increased, creatine needs to be increased. Uh, mixed results have been reported in uh, creatine supplementation and other chronic catabolic diseases. Catabolic meaning breaking down. They go on, on to mention Parkinson's, and HIV, uh, CO, chronic lung disease, and again, maybe not such good results in that area. Vitamin D. Uh, levels of vitamin D should be measured in all sarcopenic patients and supplemented in persons, look at this, with values less than 100. Now, um, that's interesting, and I'm going to hold comment on that. Um, <clears throat> I think part of the issue... Uh, number one, maybe I'm getting uh, my uh, units wrong. Uh, I can't help but comment. Maybe I'm getting my units wrong, um, but that's getting pretty close. That's uh, getting pretty close to the danger zone of 120. Again, if my, I'm getting my units correct, and somebody please help me there. Um, but here's the other question. Well, yes, you may have significant risk associated with vitamin D, but as we've mentioned multiple times, uh, loss of muscle strength and mass is also a very significant risk. So we're starting to uh, hear that, you know, again, uh, maybe accepting risky, uh, a little bit more risk. And again, hopefully I'm just uh, confusing uh, units. Please, I'd love for, to have someone uh, help me out there. Um, and I could go back and take a look, but I'm in the middle of a, of a video. So exercise. Bed rest results in rapid loss of muscle mass and strength in older persons. Now, that's one of the major things that I want to uh, get across here, that a huge portion of, of our viewers are relatively healthy people. Uh, and in fact, uh, folks that do exercise quite a, quite a bit, I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit doubtful that we're going to see a lot of um, frailty in the readers and viewers uh, of this channel. However, number one, you've got friends. Number two, you need to be aware of the, um, the risks here uh, among yourself and others. And maybe the biggest message I want to get across is uh, we need to keep exercising. As we get over 65, it becomes more and more important. Resistance exercise improves strength and decreased frailty in very old persons. And again, they've got about four studies that they, uh, that they mentioned that, uh, that goes over that. As I've dis discussed in other videos, things like weight vests, um, 
maybe a little bit frustrating, but let's go back and think about that. When you talk about waist, weight vests, one of the things they're looking at is osteoporosis. This is not osteoporosis. This is frailty, a very a different issue. There may be some overlap in terms of the, pop, the affected populations, but loss of bone mass is very different from loss of muscle mass. Resistance exercises uh, increase type 2 muscle fiber size and improve satellite muscle recruitment in older persons. In other words, give you bigger muscles and neurologically help you to, uh, your brain to remember to recruit the appropriate muscles for the appropriate, uh, you know, muscles to help each other out. Uh, aerobic exercise uh, remodels myofibers and increases mu muscle strength. Uh, in older persons, aerobic exercises increase gait speed, quality of life years. That's a technical epidemiological term which I won't go into right now, and it's cost effective. Vibratory exercises actually improves performance in our sarcopenic individuals. Now that I didn't know, and it's very interesting. Overall, a minimum of 20 to 30 minutes of resistance and, aer and aerobic exercise three times a week is recommended to slow muscle loss and prevent sarcopenia. Now again, we did talk mostly about um, supplementation, but they couldn't help but get that exercise piece in there at the end. And I'm glad they did, because there's been a lot of discussion on this channel about just that. Now, conclusion is table two. Let's go down and look at table two. It does have a good, significant list um, of their nutritional recommendations. And here it is. Aging is associated with physiological anorexia, decreased protein energy intake, and weight loss, associated with a decline in muscle mass and increased mortality, in other words, death rate. Metabolic efficiency in older persons is decreasing, requiring a higher protein intake for protein synthesis than in younger people. This suggests a balanced protein and in, in energy supplement may be useful in preventing and reversing. Persons with obesity and sarcopenia have very poor outcomes. 15 to 38% of older men and 27 to 41% of older women ingest less than the daily recommended allowance for protein. Protein intake should be increased for older men and women. Uh, recommended the total protein intake should be 1 to 1.5 grams per kilogram per day. Suggested that leucine-enriched balanced essential amino acid may be added to the diet. A trial of balanced amino acid supplementation alone with exercise in sarcopenia is recommended. Creatine may enhance the effects of exercise in these patients. Long-term studies on the effect of creatine need to be carried out. So again, every answer creates a whole new set of questions. And there's still significant unknown in this area. Based on treatment trials uh, in people with sarcopenia and uh, well-established human physiology, patients receiving anabolic therapies will have increased dietary energy needs to support increases in lean body mass. Increase in dietary energy needs will require explicit nutritional support. And it's an individual diet decision. Based on some treatment trials, uh, patients receiving anabolic therapies. Anabolic, I mean, it's like you've heard anabolic drugs trying to increase uh, muscle mass. So anabolic therapies does not have to do with uh, steroids or other anabolic drugs. It has to do with the therapies that we've been talking about, uh, exercise and uh, adequate protein intake. <laughs> Um, and what they're saying here is that they probably require adequate protein intake and uh, explicit nutritional support. Uh, next point, there's a need for reasonably powered clinical trials to test these hypotheses. Next one, vitamin D levels should be measured in all these patients. Vitamin D supplementation um, to raise it above one uh, nano, nanomoles per liter as an adjunctive therapy. Either vitamin D2 or D3 is an acceptable replacement. As you saw from uh, the Cochrane studies, at least in terms of bone density, they said vitamin D2 was not really that helpful. Doses of 50,000 international units of vitamin D once a week are safe. 
Short-term resistance exercise improves strength and gait speed. Aerobic exercise improves quality of life years and is cost-effective. Cost Epidemiological studies suggest positive effects of uh, physical fitness on health. And that group recommends resistance and aerobic training for 20 to 30 minutes, three times a week. Again, we got into a lot of detail, uh, but it's on a very important issue. It's deceptively common and deceptively lethal. And maybe deceptively easy to avoid. Thank you for your interest.